So this, um, this actually addresses somewhat about Alaska, but there's an Alaska switch to a very remote part um, of Burma. And uh, let's see if we can go like this. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to check somebody out, write a prescription, and send them off to go get glasses. But if there are no glasses available, this is an opportunity for you to look at an opportunity that may work in your area, may not work in your area, but it's a little bit. So um, I'm just going to put my traveling backpack down over here. Um, and uh, each one of you has had maybe some opportunities to do mission work. And the question is, how remote is that area, particularly um, whether or not you have the availability of spectacles? Now, we have the opportunity for a poll. How many people here have been involved in eye missions? I think if you look on your app and the po under polling, so it's the COS app, and you go to the tab that says polling, and that question will be on your device, and you just indicate yes or no on that device, and it'll show us the results just as, as they come in. Is it working? Anybody having success with that? Everybody's trained under polling. Uh, it's a different question. Anyway, okay. Um, let's then, uh, let's raise our hands. Just okay. raising hands. <laughs> you guys are involved time. in that. All right. <laughs> Next one. And and this one is kind of important. Where you do your missions? Are you? Is there an optical dispensary within 50 kilometers of where you do your work? Um, and so maybe we can have raising hand. How many people are doing mission work where you do not have an optical dispensary within 50 kilometers? It's a, it's a, it's a bit, bit of an audience, anyway. That, but this is important, important because I think one of the important things is that whatever you do, you don't want to step on whatever is happening locally. So there may be somebody making a living in this this could get in the way of that. Um, so my interest in this started out with doing uh, remote uh, medical and vision outreach in pediatric ophthalmology in Alaska. We would go with a missionary uh, pilot, fly into villages, screen the kids, examine the kids, and then take the prescriptions back home and mail them um, sturdy glasses to their village, and they could be able to pick them up. And, and that was the dependable delivery of spectacles. Um, then my son and I and my rest of my family got involved in the Karen state of Burma, which is, has been in a state of civil war um, for over 50 years, has no cell phones functioning in it, has two million people with no local MD uh, and obviously no spectacle delivery in that uh, area. Um, and. I started out doing kids, but then had just an overwhelming number of adults who had zero spectacles. And so cataract surgery, you've done a lot of talk about it, super important. But if you show up in a place and nobody has spectacles, I think you can get more lines of vision over years with spectacles than you can even do with cataract surgery. So um, it's an important tool. But where we were, if you go into a village, um, and you arrive there, they don't have postal back, you leave and you try and deliver them back again. Their, their village may be burned by the Burma army by the time you get there. So spectacles show up and they're not there anymore. So the delivery system, in order if it's gonna be effective, has to be essentially on site and while you're there. Um, there are ways to deliver uh, somewhat portable spectacles in different ways. So silver has a system of flexible uh, lenses that you inject fluid into and you can make them more plus or suck back out and make them somewhat minus. This is spherical thing, They're pretty fancy looking, not super good if it's gonna freeze um, and the plastic scratches pretty well. But Dow Corning has this model. Has anybody used these? So there's one. Um, so anyway, it, these are selling like hotcakes, um, not. Um, but uh, 
But it's, a, it's an interesting concept, and I think this is the kind of thing that a couple of engineers who haven't actually gone out there and done stuff have a great idea, um, but it hasn't panned out real well. So this is another opportunity, um, and so this is two rotating lenses that allows you to get plus up close. The price is a bit difficult to look for mission work, though. The other one uh, in your area is recycled spectacles are pretty good. Um, but this is kind of a sad story, really, I think, is that generally older people and a lot of astigmats donate spectacles. And the Lions Club throws out all uh, astigmatic and all bifocals, and they just keep spheres. So it's probably only like 15% of donated glasses end up being there, and they end up being kind of thick cases. But this, if you have transportation, is a great way to get spectacles to go with you. But the Lions Club is usually assuming that it's going to be handed out by non- uh, eye doctors, and so that they, they don't want to do harm, so they just give you kind of lenses that the patient can put on and think it looks better. Um, and that's, that's the way that those are dispensed. So you have the potential to have those kind of glasses, but what about people with atypical refractive error? And that's the challenge that I've worked on over several years uh, in Burma. So our approach uses uh, two breeders, which can fit in a backpack well. Um, and in China, they're about $2, but once you get them delivered or something like that through Thailand, it's about 6 or $7. And then what I call a Burma bifocal, which is a typical uh, adult 60-year-old refractive error for a lot of people that you see there. And these are Zenny ordered for about 25 bucks or something like that. So you've got to supply these. But for patients who don't fit either the typical reader or they don't fit the Burma bifocal, how else are you going to deliver lenses? So the concept was, if you have lenses and they've got to meet an axis, if you have a completely round lens and a round frame, you potentially could prescribe and deliver spectacles by the axis on site. So I ordered up a bunch of glasses with different PDs, little kid PDs and uh, adult PDs. So, do you remember when the, uh, the MacBook Air was released? And they, they pulled, it, pulled it out of an envelope. Um, anyway, in Burma, this, this is lens crafters for us right here. And so this can fit in a backpack and this has the potential to deliver um, multiple custom spectacles in uh, remote places. <clears throat> we have slide pages with 38 millimeter round lenses that are pre-made in spherical forms and in plus one and plus two cylinder forms um, in a different page like this. Um, they come in a notebook. Welsh Allen made a really nice little um, retina scope, but they don't make it anymore. Um, but then we have frames, appropriate size frames, and a skioscopy rack, plus and minus, um, with uh, teaching materials uh, and a little bit of glue. Um, local youth group uh, took all, all these lenses and stuffed them in those pages. Um, that's cheap labor. Um, now, how many people here have exposed some kind of experience with photo screening? Okay, the pediatric ophthalmologists have a certain amount. It's a pretty amazing technique, but essentially it is red reflexes that should be nice, round, equal, but if they have a crescent in them, that will indicate a refractive error. Um, and so we've used this quite a bit. All photo screening requires is a camera where the flash and the lens are close together so that they subtend about one degree at a distance. Um, and they, those can be very effective for screening little kids, even in remote places, as long as you have the ability to dispense spectacles. Um, screening with no ability to do spectacles is fairly worthless in kid amblyopia. So photo screening, you can sort, um, I did that really quick, um, but you can sort kids who have normal uh, on your left or crescents of light as you see on your right. Um, then Initially, I did it, and then teaching the medics to do uh, skioscopy, retinoscopy on those patients who have difficulty. <clears throat> then the next trick is related to the lenses. If you have a plus spherocylinder lens, 
um, they have to somehow be able to figure where the axis of that lens is. Um, and if you have a lens, it has a conoid of CERN in it, and you need to figure where your plus or your minus cylinder is on that lens. Or if they fall out of the, the case, you've got to somehow figure out what they are again. So the optics there, your lensometer is the sun and an extra plus lens that you know about, and then you've got your cylinder lens. Um, so the cylinder power is determined by what you end up having on this cross that the, is at the end of the conoid of Sturm. So we have another one of these survey things. Um, the survey thing basically says, if you have a lens, what, how do you determine what the axis of the plus cylinder is? Um, now here's your questions. This is kind of a board kind of a question. Um, uh, but this is critical to be able to teach if you're going to have people doing this kind of stuff. Um, Bob, the reason the survey doesn't work is you put it on a different polling. So it's on your address. You didn't put it on the COS w website. That's why it's not working because our, our app is connected to our polling. Oh, okay. You put it on your own. You apparently put it uploaded. It yeah, it was actually phone. buzzing. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> anyway, if Stan had done it, it would have worked out, right? All right. So, so then if you do pick out a spherocylinder lens, you're pulling it out of your notebook. Um, and you put it in, uh, and you, we have them draw on the edge of the plus cylinder, and they put the plus cylinder. Most of the patients we have have against the rule cylinder, so they're going to be close to 180, uh, and they line it up. The patients are good enough that you can hand the patient the lens, and they'll rotate it themselves, and they'll pick maybe something. They want five degrees, not 180, uh, and they can help you a lot with that. The patients also can take the skioscopy rack and pick sills if the sills are going to be there for them. So th that's really handy. Um, so the issue is you may be using this yourself, and this may help you a lot. But again, locally, once you go home, they're kind of stuck. So can you, can you end up addressing the ability to dispense spectacles that they're going to be able to do? So this is what we did teaching medics in Burma. On the website that you see at the top, this teaching uh, is a <clears throat> this is our paradigm for what the people need to do to look at the different kind of patients that are going to come through your clinic. So if we look here and we highlight in light, we have them come in, they put a name tag on with prayer partners on it, and we get, do a history. Sometimes that'll pull out right now patients who've got, if they, they look at them and they get a white pupil already, they get sent over toward the cataract end of the clinic. <clears throat> Photo screening is useful for kids less than five. Um, and so we put them in a tent so that it's dark. Um, and then we take pictures of them and then we read them right off of that. <clears throat> at level one, patients who are older than 40 and they don't do well on a near chart, they're going to be end up giving tri readers. And if you give them a pair of readers and they have a big smile on their face, they don't even necessarily have to go through the rest of the clinic. They're taken care of. The next group have difficulty at distance and near, and they're usually older than 50. And that's the group that we try, not necessarily just the readers, but the Burma bifocals that have cylinder in them. If they're 55, they may not want to take cylinder yet. By the time they're 60, they're thrilled with a cylinder. And so it has to do with their accommodation lagging and whether they can function in bright light at all or not. So when they're 60 or 65, they like that sill, and, and they'll pop those glasses on, and they'll just go with them. <clears throat> if there's, it's a mix and their refractive error is going to be a bunch of sill or something like that or something custom, this is where the more complex thing is. And for each of the medics, it's pretty easy to give them readers and hand readers out. That may end up taking care of 60 to 70 percent of the patients, and it's fun. But the ones that don't work, the bifocals are a little bit more complicated to train, but not bad. Once we get specific, difficult kind of a challenges, um, skioscopy, letting them pick their own lens out, 
it's a little bit more difficult, but actually determining spheral cylinder, that's sort of like a whole extra day and a half of training to kind of go through that. And then if they have white pupils and their pupils react, that's going to be a cataract case. If the pupils don't react, then they get prayer. So this is a handout that we, with translators, go through and teach them about diopters, teach them about the relationship between diopters and focal distance, um, get some kind of nomenclature for what acuity is, and then there's an example of a Burma bifocal here at the bottom, which shows something about where the cylinder axis goes, which is fairly complicated for them. This shows them the relationship between uh, convex and concave lenses and where the focal distance is and how they can add a known plus lens to a minus lens, making a new summed plus lens so that they can see where it focuses. And this shows you that the nearer, the nearer focal line is where the plus axis is. Now, when you go in and you tell this medics something about degrees, 180 degrees, 90 degrees, they've they didn't grow up doing that at all. But they have learned to navigate. Uh, and so sometimes you can end up having the axis be something more like north, south, east, or west. And that's a translation that they may be able to understand. <clears throat> this is the relationship between age and refractive error and the, and the types of spectacles that we, we would generally tend to, to give. And once they get this down, the patients are coming in, they tend to already have a pretty good idea that they're going to end up be fitting in these different kind of refractive errors. The customs being the kind of complicated ones, but they're not, they're not super common, but they, that, that's where your portable lens crafters set work. So this is, this is two Burma vision kits uh, inside Burma um, with the other kind of things that we brought in there with acuity sets near, near and distance and a retinoscope. Here are the medics actually handing out glasses. When, when medics can hand out just regular glasses or the more complicated glasses, they've seen, they've seen a lot of frustrating cases and patients are automatically and quickly uh, grateful for doing this. And so it's fun for you, but you're going to leave it with them and they're going to enjoy it. And pretty soon they're going to, so that restoring their supply is your next challenge, but at least they're handing these things out. And in Burma, they're, they're hiking through the woods, finding villages with people and handing them out to people who would have otherwise no access. Um, so we've trained even more than this, but these are medics in different areas of remote Burma that um, um, work with the free Burma Rangers. So this is just a little bit of an idea of how we go through the process of, of teaching and we end up doing lecture one day, then we do a clinic for a day. Then we do a lecture for a day and we do a clinic for the day. And they'll sit there for eight hours translating, going through complicated math um, because they really want to help people out. So lens crafters can make glasses in about an hour. The Burma kit can make glasses in about 10 minutes. Um, here are uh, the kids of the Free, Free Burma Rangers, both of them having volunteered to do uh, retina teaching for the medics. Um, so this may or may not be something that fits into your area. The possibility to provide custom spheral cylinder spectacles um, in really remote areas. The, the thing that I want to take home is if you have local availability to give spectacles, you for sure don't want to step on their toes. You, want to, you don't want to make that be a problem. But there are places where you really may not be able to give any. And I think the delivery of spectacles may end up having spectacular results in overall vision Im impairment reduction, even compared to cataract surgery. Thank you. <laughs>